Okay, ladies and gents, we're going to take this uh, ballast apart. This is a Philips um, HID PV C070 CDM. So this is a ceramic metal halide or metal halide electronic ballast uh, for 70 watt lamps. So we're just going to pop this thing apart. This thing, as it is, is designed for internal or rather building use. It can go in a ceiling void. Light connects here, power connects here, earth connects here. Um, but it was quite interesting when you disassemble it, it comes apart just like that. You've actually got this OEM module inside here, and you can purchase these just as an individual module if you're building, for instance, lighting systems, and this can go inside the lamp, the luminaire. So this circuit board is fearsome looking. I mean, it looks horrendously complicated, um, and it's mounted on this little aluminium heat sink, and uh, it just pops off really. Um, there are a few little clips which I've already undone, but it should just drop off like this. So, look at that. I mean, that is pretty fearsome stuff. Pretty complicated. I mean, look at all those traces. Fearsome stuff. So we'll take a quick look and see how it's built and how it works. Um, it makes a real change looking at something like this compared to that cheap Chinese power supply we looked at the other day. Um, this is a total different class of device. So, here we go power entry here through these orange connectors. Fairly standard front end. Interestingly we've got these fuses and it's double fused, fused in the live and the neutral. We've got um, surge absorber here, inrush current limiter here, a filter capacitor here. We've got a filter differential mode, uh, no I don't mean differential mode I think, I mean common mode choke, um, filter capacitor, I'm not quite sure what that is, I think some of the surge limiter or, or something like that more filter capacitors here and the next step is here this uh, MOSFET here which is the uh, power factor correction switch and it goes works with this inductor and this is this uh, switch um, this diode here and this power factor controller here so this is actually a, a boost mode Power factor, active power factor correction chip, and what it does is it's a voltage regulator, and it steps up the input voltage to, and in this case, um, about 600 and something volts, about 600 volts, um, while simultaneously correcting the power factor. Now, those of you who've been paying attention have probably noticed that I've missed something out. Where is the rectifier? And there is no bridge rectifier here at all. The bridge rectifier is actually underneath. And it's made out of four discrete diodes here. One, two, three, four. And it goes immediately between the differential mode choke and uh, these filter capacitors here. So, 600 volts into these capacitors. These are 315 volt each. They're connected in series, 68 microfarad. Uh, Rubicon capacitors, ultra high temperature, ultra long life. These are no expense spared, very expensive capacitors. Okay, next step is the voltage regulator and inverter. And in fact, the whole thing is combined into one single stage. So here you have the controller IC, and I think this is a custom made IC because I can't find any record of it on any data sheet. Um, and what it is, is it produces a, it's a half bridge step down converter. So in effect it's two pulse wave modulator converters connected in half bridge configuration. And of course this is why it, the voltage is stepped up to 600 and something volts. So in effect you get a, a zero volt in the middle. And you get plus 300 and a minus 300 volt supply. And then each one of these is operated in turn. So this one here, initially operated by this MOSFET, will pulse width modulate at a high frequency, say around 10 kilohertz, um, to provide the average voltage on the positive side, and then this one will come on and it will produce a reduced voltage, step down voltage on the negative side. So you, the problem with using halide lamps is that you can't use a high frequency inverter so typical fluorescent lights used to use a high frequency AC inverter, a very simple circuit, operates at around 20 kilohertz. You can't do that with a halide lamp because it will set up vibrations and resonance in the arc and the arc will become unstable and it will flail around producing a flickering light and actually the flailing arc 
may well hit the side of the arc tube, causing the arc tube to explode. So you really don't want that. So you have to use a low frequency like 50 or 60 hertz. In fact, this one here operates at about 150 to make sure that there's no flickering. So this, these, these components do two things. This one switches on, then this one switches on at about 150 hertz to give the low frequency AC. But each one is individually switched at high frequency to regulate the voltage. Regulated voltage then comes out through here, runs out through this transformer. And this transformer is interesting because the actual secondary is connected in series with this regulator supply. So what does this transformer do? Well, this transformer is the igniter. So you have a huge number of turns, probably about 100 or 200 turns on this secondary, and there's a primary with about 5 or 10 turns on it. And you've got, you can see that there's some high current stuff. There's a big fat capacitor here, polyester film or polypropylene film, high current pulse capacitor, and we've got these big resistors. And on the back, we've got this heavy duty IGBT switch. And what will happen to generate the starting pulses of around 4 to 5 kilovolts, this capacitor will be charged up to about 600 volts. And then the IGBT will be fired. And that will discharge in that capacitor into the primary of this transformer, producing a very high voltage pulse on the output. And that will use, be used to ignite the lamp. Once the current starts flowing, then this transformer core will saturate out and it will no longer operate in transformer mode and it will just simply be a short circuit and there are some sensing circuits that combine with this uh, controller to switch off the igniter circuit so that's how it works very simple so filters rectifier step up boost converter half bridge step down driver inverter and igniter now what's quite interesting about this is actually that it's beautifully made. I mean, it really is no expense spared. All the parts are absolute premium parts. These Rubicon capacitors are very expensive. Even the other small electrolytics are Rubicon. Um, these polyester film, polypropylene film, sorry, capacitors are of very good quality. And these are premium, um, good quality um, international rectifier uh, MOSFETs, nice uh, international. Uh, rectifier MOSFET driver here, good heavy duty, very heavy duty IGBT, um, proper power factor correction diode in order to get high efficiency, not your regular <laughs> rectifier diode. Um, PFC diodes um, have very special demands and if you use a standard rectifier diode you'll get poor performance. Um, What's very interesting here is when we come and look at these MOSFETs here, every single one has a beautifully protected gate with a resist series resistor and catch diode to protect the gate to prevent stray static or malfunction from blowing up these expensive MOSFETs, which failure will have catastrophic effects uh, on the circuit. Um, everything is, is very carefully done, very careful attention to detail with EMI, Lots of little filters here, very careful uh, design. So all in all, this is really is a very nice, no expense spared piece of kit, and uh, that really explains why these things sell for seventy or eighty quid each. So yeah, thought that was in hope that was interesting.